Just because these children were with us did not mean that they were going to stay, that it was not going to be the outcome that we'd hoped for. We thought we were trusting the Lord, and through that, it revealed that in some ways we weren't. My name is Mike Strong, and I'm one of the elders at the church. I've been here for six and a half years, and this is my wife, Annie. We've been married for 22 years. I don't think we had talked about foster care and adoption first thing in marriage. We had wanted to wait about five years to have kids, and after five months of being married, we received a child that we were not expecting. So through that process, God laid foster care on our hearts. Yeah, foster care was one of those things we actually said we were never gonna do, but God was like, yes, you are. <laughs> so the difference between foster care and adoption, foster care, there's never a guarantee that you will be able to keep the child. So you can do foster care with the intent to adopt, but if the mother completes the services, the mother or the father complete the services that they're called to do by the courts, then they may have an opportunity to reunify with the child. When you do straight adoption, typically rights for the birth parents have already been severed and you skip the court part of it. I think our reservations were more associated with foster care. Um, adoption, you know, you're going to get the child for sure. Um, foster care, falling in love and then watching the child go, that's really hard. But realizing that God's in control, he's sovereign. And so if he wants the child to stay, he'll make it possible. And just being committed to the season that I'm gonna be the best mom I can be to this child for that season that God allows me to have it. I don't know why I'm getting emotional. There's a bond that forms with that child. As soon as that child comes into your house, there's a bond and for the parents, but also for the other children in the house. And so being able to express to them that we're called to serve no matter the outcome. And just because it could be a hard circumstance doesn't mean that we don't do it. And we do what God calls us to do, and God provides exactly what we need to get through it. I would say out of the five kids that we've adopted, four out of the five were supposed to return home. So we would be on this path where it looked like they're gonna stay and then all of a sudden something would happen and they're like, "We're this child's returning. So we'd pack their bags, we'd get them ready to leave. And then at the last minute, someone fails a drug test or there's a psychological evaluation and then it flips again. So very up and down emotional roller coaster, but totally worth it for the child. It just, that was like at the 11th hour, it was, it just flipped. So, yeah, so you're really relying on God's sovereignty. You're relying, goodness gracious, I can't do this. You're just trusting God knows what's best. Your turn. I'll take it. <laughs> Looking back, you would see being tight-fisted with these children. We love them so much and wanted to be able to keep them, but there's no guarantee that that's God's plan. And so through those experiences, we learned that we needed to trust the Lord and know that in that moment that God was providing for the child exactly what they needed. And what a great opportunity to give them God's word and to point them to Jesus each and every single day, because alternatively, they wouldn't have had that experience for them to see a mom and dad who, who love Christ in a family where we wanna live for Christ. And God was so kind to us. So we only had one that left and she was only with us for a week. So we got to keep everybody we had, so, which was great because I probably would have been a mess. So our first adoption was Caitlin. Caitlin is our niece and we were asked to babysit. We're great babysitters. <laughs> We did it for 20 years. <laughs> that was a private adoption. We hired a lawyer and we did that on our own. So there was no DCS involved or anything like that, but it still was a very lengthy process. It took three years um, just because of legal issues and different things. So she was our first, we started off our first child was an adopted child. Um, and so then we had two birth kids after that because we thought, hey, we're doing the family thing now. So we had two birth kids. And then um, after that, our son, Ryan, said I would like a brother. And so we're like, okay, well, let's, let's adopt. So I just wanted to adopt people that were free for adoption. So we got all certified and did all of our classes and got all prepared. And then I went to a family wedding and my cousins showed me a picture of her niece and said, she's in foster care and I know you're licensed. Will you take her? It was a girl. We were going for a boy. So I went home and I showed 
Mike the picture. And I said, would you, what do you think? He's like, yeah. So I tracked her down, I did contact DCS and we switched our license from an adoptive license to a foster license, they're different. So we had to do a little bit more work. We met her and then she slowly moved in with us. She finally moved in permanently and exactly a week later, I get a call from DCS, your cousin just gave birth to a baby boy. It was like three in the afternoon. Mike was on a date with the kids at a movie and um, they're like, and you have till nine o'clock tonight to tell me yes or no. And I was like, oh, so I'm like, hey, honey, <laughs> I know you're about to go in a movie, but hey, would you like a baby? You know, that kind of conversation. And I don't remember how long it took you to reply, but he replied before the nine o'clock cutoff. And so we said yes. And literally, was it the next day? Because we didn't have a crib or anything. We had no baby supplies. We thought we were done. I sent out an email to a group, homeschool chat, church groups, and I had, I had everything I needed within that day to take care of this. You know, God gives you assignment, he gave me the materials to do it, and he arrived the next day. So we got a two-year-old and a newborn baby, and that was a very rocky um, one, where different people were wanting different kids, and there was a good grandma, there was a dad, there was a dad that was in jail, there was mom. I mean, we were in court with all these different people, and we never thought we would get to keep either of them. Um, but it all worked out the way it was supposed to, and God's sovereignty, and we, they got to stay. And we closed our license, we were done. And then, a few years later, um, was when we reopened it again for Josie and for Alex to join our family as well. So Josie, it started with me having this just feeling like I wasn't done. I guess I had been reading uh, New Testament and Jesus, he's got his 12 disciples and they live with him and they're with him all day long. And I was thinking, God, how? what's the best way for me to make disciples and to the next generation? And it just came to my mind, you know what? I really would like to go back to doing foster care again and just babies, newborn babies, and do it as a family. So I went to Mike with that proposal. He probably thought it was crazy because we already had five kids at that time. And he said, yes. And so we went to the kids and they were like, yeah, let's do it. And we were all gonna do it together. And we, we were all excited. And so we signed up and our second baby that we got was Josie. We got her when she was three days old. And it was a family project. Like we all helped her, we all loved her. In fact, I always joke that she would cry and fall and I was the last to re come onto the scene because all the children would run in. Her case was so long and so drawn out. And I don't know legally if I'm allowed to tell the details of her case. Definitely an environment we didn't want her to return to. So we loved her intensely. When you have a newborn baby that you're getting up in the middle of the night and it's against you, you fall in love really quickly and you care about their future. You care about what's gonna happen to them. And it took three and a half years until she was adopted. So it was just a long drawn out court case and it just kept delaying and delaying. And I can't imagine how terrible that would have been after three years if she'd been taken away. So yeah, that was a really hard trial because we just knew at any moment she could go. With Alex, I came home from work one day and two of our kids were waiting for me and they said, there's something that we really need. So they took me to the laptop and showed me a picture of a teen boy. So the heart gallery shows pictures and bios for all of the teens that are currently in the foster care system and up for adoption. And when they showed me the picture, I said immediately, no. We had six kids and I thought seven is probably not something that is going to work for us. And after that, the Lord continued to lay this, this boy in my heart. And so the next day I reached out to his caseworker and we had a long conversation to hear more about the story. And so through prayer, through family discussion with everybody, we all discussed it and we decided that we would pursue that and wait to see if the Lord shut the door or if we continued down that path path and eventually he was selected to go to somebody else and so we thought well it looks like the Lord's shutting the door on this but then about six weeks later we got a call back and we were told that didn't work out and would we would we still be interested and so we said yes and I remember Thanksgiving weekend of 2019 the two of us went to Goodyear to the group home where we lived to meet him for the first time and we spent about three hours with him and we left there and said to each other we need to pursue him and on April 1st of 2020 he moved in with us yeah so it was COVID so he had a choice it was 
either don't see us for months or just move in with us, which they don't ever do that. They usually gradually have you move in. So he literally moved in and was on lockdown with us, was homeschooled by me. So it was very probably intense for him just to be from like a group home to like our home, bare, you know, having mom there with you all day long. He was 14 at the time that we met him and we started to go visit him. And he moved in about a week after his 15th birthday. And then he was adopted the day after his 16th birthday. He was not sure that he wanted to be adopted out. And being the age that he was, he really had a voice in that. And through past trauma and through some bad experiences, he was really protecting himself, I think, from being hurt again but we we really have a heart to train to disciple in particular my heart is for for men for boys to be able to train and to disciple and so as we prayed about it and discussed it we saw this opportunity to give this boy the gospel knowing that he probably would not have that anywhere else and so that really was a big part of us moving forward with him and we also gave him the option to not be adopted, that we could be a part of his life and be kind of like mentors if he wasn't comfortable with that. And I could see that's a huge deal, going to live with strangers and their mom and dad now. That's a, that's a big step for someone. So just going and having new parents and a new family and having to be okay with that. One of the biggest challenges about being an adoptive parent really goes back to foster care and not knowing the outcome. And there's really a tug on the heart with that because you love this child. And in many circumstances, we knew what they would be going back to if they went back to their family. And in those circumstances, it would not be a positive outcome. So there was a constant struggle where we struggled with trusting God really is what the root was and trusting his plan. And just because these children were with us did not mean that they were going to stay, that it was not going to be the outcome that we'd hoped for. So in those moments, we needed to cling to the Lord and trust his perfect plan. We thought we were trusting the Lord and through that it revealed that in some ways we weren't because we were expecting things within our timing and we expected certain outcomes. And whenever that got rocked, it really showed that maybe we weren't really trusting him. And through that process, God grew us, he sanctified us, and made us more like Christ. And through that, God, God was greatly glorified. There were so, so many times when we could have lost the kids, where they should have gone back. And you could see God's hand just moving and making things work out. And like it, it wasn't our timing or the way we would have wanted, maybe wanted it to happen, but it would just be like these last minute things that were almost miraculous in a sense. Like our first adoption, we should not have her. We only got her because no one showed up to court that day. And we were convinced that that person was gonna show up to court that day, but otherwise we had no legal anything to stand on. We had no right to our niece. You, you really don't, unless people just disappear. So we shouldn't have her. And there were so many people fighting for my two cousins and so many different circumstances that we shouldn't have them either. But God just slowly removed all those obstacles and things that we thought were impossible were suddenly just swept away. And we're like, whoa, this is amazing. It was just these tiny moments that completely flipped our case. And it was just um, so interesting watching God work, like a hyper way to watch God work because you know, you've got all these insurmountable walls and you get to watch God just take them out. One of the things that was really helpful for us in foster care and adoption was the support system that we had. We had a lot of friends that came alongside us from church that were constantly praying for us and checking in to see if we needed anything. So that was such a, a blessing, such a great help for us through that process. Nobody should ever go through foster care or adoption alone. Yeah, like I said, when Josiah came into our life, we owned nothing baby related and it all came. Just like ding dong, a flood, and I had everything I needed. And then after that, meals, just like I had given birth to a baby, people were bringing me meals and praying for us. And that was really helpful just to have that community walk beside us. You see a picture of how the body of Christ should function together. So through the needs that we had during foster care, you saw the body of Christ come together and serve and provide and pray. And we were so thankful.